<laughs> Little snowman. Hi there. I was working on this guy over here, Space Wolf Ancient, and I got a lot of questions on how I made the, the flag. And a while back I made a tutorial on how to make cloths and capes. And I showed it on uh, on this guy over here, Captain YouTube. And the process is quite similar, but um, there's a couple of tricks extra to it. And I thought maybe it might be a good idea to uh, to make a quick tutorial about how to to make these these kind of uh, flags. And so what I did is I already added a uh, backpack with a pole, and uh, today I'm going to sculpt a little flag for that, and maybe some some extra. So as you can see here for the ancient, I also made some some uh, ribbons and some skulls, of course. So. I'll focus on the flag mainly, but let's see uh, what else we can make. First step, get yourself some fresh green stuff. So the same thing uh, applies to what I'm doing here as the previous time, right? So I have this big cup of water and every time that the green stuff starts sticking to things, I'll dunk my fingers in the water and uh, make the green stuff wet. You can also do it with Vaseline. I used to do it with Vaseline before. And the only thing is because then you don't have to reapply it every time. So you, you grease the, the green stuff and your fingers want with Vaseline in your set for the rest of the, uh, the sculpting session. But uh, with Vaseline you need to clean it off afterwards. Uh, before you start painting because otherwise it will mess with the paint. So water is uh, for me just easier. So because the water will evaporate and then uh, you don't have any, there's nothing left. All right, there we go. We have our sausage. We add a load of water. Voila, and now we take a flat tool, which I already prepared here. So just a tool with a flat end and squish it. As you can see, there's a lot of water, which should prevent it from sticking to the to the mat, but it doesn't always, of course. So every once in a while, while flattening it out, try to peel it, peel it off to make sure that it's not stuck. And just use your fingers as well until you roughly get a shape that you're satisfied with. I always try to make it reasonably thin, but not too thin, because if it's too thin, then it it will look weird on the miniature and you can't drape it properly because it will not stay in shape uh, but if it's too thick it will become both too heavy and realistic as well so there's a, like a an optimum thickness to it which you just have to figure out by doing it a couple of times okay i think this is about it so right now it's way too wide and too high properly probably well yeah, something like that. So I cut out a shape that's slightly wider than the uh, than the pole because I want to be able to to fold it as well. Drip. So I'll cut out a flag. Doesn't have to be too tidy. Once you start folding it anyway, you won't see the uh, irregularities. And now the, the, the other thing is that, I mean, I can just uh, sharpen it up the, at the bottom end as well. Uh, but the idea with flags is if they're, uh, if they're in the wind long enough, the end will start fraying, right? That's also what I did here. So the idea is that the, you, the, the flag used to be longer, but simply by being in the, in the wind and in the battlefield, the, the top will start to, the, sorry, the bottom will start to fray and, and become smaller and smaller. So that's what I'm going to do now. And um, so this irregular size is actually fine for that purpose. And what I do is use, I take a sharp knife and I start to draw some irregular lines with it at the bottom. And at the sides as well. Like 
magnets. go. That's the first step. And then the second step here is to take a uh, bit more blunt tool than a knife and pull it down a little bit to fray it even more and make it more irregular than you just did. Yeah, that should be about it. Green. And now you can also make some extra dents and holes near the near the bottom here. Don't make them too regular. Something like this. Some holes in there. Some bullet holes. It's a battlefield, right? So voila. A bit more. Just have some fun with it until you think that you're roughly there. I think I'm happy with this. I'm not too happy with the top because I still can see my fingerprints on there. Let's move it out a bit. Right. There we have it. One flag. All right, so now I uh, add some more water again so that I can safely pick it up with my fingers. Now I'm going to make some folds in it. Like these are the, the first folds that you that you can add. Well, it's not attached to the miniature yet. If you add enough water, you can even almost fold to each other and it will not stick. So that's the, the benefit of having heaps of water on there. The downside to it though is that it won't stick as well to the miniature either, but that's gonna be fine. So I'm going to add some more to the back side as well. We make some folds. And then we simply lay it on top of the miniature. And by using a sharp tool or blunt tool, doesn't really matter. You can just sculpt it over the flag hole. Push it on there a little bit to make it stick. And then you also pull it down in the center a bit because it's hanging down right from the... Okay, a bit of a in there. Voila. Too much. Back a little. All right. Okay. And now the other idea is that my cape and the turret are moving with along with the wind, right? So that's what I want for the flag as well. So I'll just start moving it around. And the green stuff starts sticking again. I just add some more water. You can be as dramatic or simple with the movement as you like. Just 
try to figure out what looks nice to you, right? Yeah. We're getting there. Now, uh, you know, take it down a bit more here. Make sure it holds. Now, by pushing it against the pole here, I think I'm. Um, there's enough support already for keeping it uh, shaped like this. Mm, if that's not the case, there's a couple of things you can do, which, which I also showed in the, the video about making the cape, which is I can either allow the green stuff to set while um, sticking the miniature on that side. Right, if I just rest it like this, the gravity will help me uh, get the, the flag in the right position. The other thing that you can do is take some sticky poutine and make some uh, some rough supports for for the green stuff. So if I just add a, a bit here and then gently push the green stuff against it, that will be support while it's drying. So I think like this should be fine. Maybe ooh, a little bit more like this. Yeah, that should be it. Cool. No. Okay, my uh, servo school is acting funny. And then the other thing I would like to do is add uh, a couple of the long ribbons. I made another video about how to make purity seals on this guy as well. And this, the, the process is just the same. So I take a bit of green stuff. Like a sausage out of it again, just a, quite a thin one this time. Add a boatload of water again, and a flat tool, and flatten it, and then sometimes push it so that it doesn't stick to the plate. decide which way is going to be up and which way is going to be down and again just like with the flag I'm going to tear it apart a bit at the bottom to make it look frayed and what I can also do is add some couple of notches to the side All right so I'll add this one to the left side Do Use my fingers in the tool to shape it the way I like it. There we go.
It's easier if you first uh, if you first make the flag and allow it to cure completely and then add the ribbons because then if you don't like the way the ribbons turn out you can just pull them off and start again. Um, but once you get a hang of it, it, it'll get easier to just do everything in one go. But for the first couple of times I would recommend do it, doing it in separate steps. Probably. the ribbon to stick out a little bit more so I'll just add a extra support here to make it look like the wind is uh, catching it yeah there we go I'll just put this away, allow it to cure, and then uh, I think we're done. And yeah, as I said, uh, once everything is dry, it uh, should look something like this. And you can work in layers, right? Like I just explained, first make the flag, allow it to cure, then add a couple of ribbons. I think I, I made the flag first, then added the outer ribbons on this one, allowed all that to cure, then added more ribbons on the back side, allowed to cure, added some rope, uh, some rope here, and then some of the totems i don't know if you can see them so these the, the final the smallest details went last uh, just because they're the tiniest and uh, they, they go on top i hope you liked it and uh, if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials let me know in the comments thank you very much see you later